Well, we bring you these uh, stories almost every day, most of them from Queensland. Cars stolen, homes ransacked and lives destroyed by young criminals. The state government has promised to curb the crisis, but things just seem to be getting worse. Youth reoffending is on the rise, now at 69%. That's 7 out of 10 young offenders. And eight people have died, allegedly at the hands of young criminals this year alone. We are eight months into the year. Just let that sink in for a moment. Youth crime victims marched on state parliament yesterday demanding action, including more support for victims and stronger punishments for offenders. They had a whole bunch of questions for the Premier, but she wasn't there to answer them. Anastasia Palaszczuk joins us now to talk through some of those questions. Premier, good morning to you. Good morning, Carl. Do you still have the ticket for the top job? Absolutely. These victims yesterday were literally chanting your name. You were once the voice of the people. Nothing would have stopped you from going outside. What stopped you yesterday? Well, Carl, uh, it's a parliament day. It's very busy, but also too, uh, people know me and I meet with uh, victims in private. Um, usually, as you know, they're very personal stories. They're very heartfelt stories. And I meet with victims right across the state. But I don't do it with a TV camera in the room and I don't do it with a TV camera outside. These are very deeply personal stories for people. They get very upset as well and I want to hear personally from them. And that's why I'm fast tracking the appointment of a victims commissioner. We will have an interims victim commissioner in place by next week. Uh, we know how important it is for people to make sure that they are reassured about the processes that they have to go through. And the loud message I'm getting, very clear from victims, is they get lost in the process. So I want to make sure that we respond and that is exactly what we are so doing. So you didn't meet with, you didn't go outside to meet uh, with the victims yesterday and their families. Uh, you called a private meeting uh, with some of those victims. How much notice did you give them? I meet with victims right across the state. No, but yesterday. Carl, I've, I had about, I have, I had meetings. I have meetings in Toowoomba. I have meetings in Mount Isa. Yesterday. I meet with people all of the time that share their personal stories. And yes, I did meet with someone um, who lost a loved one. And yes, I sat there and over a cup of tea and we talked about it. Uh, that is the way I conduct myself. And the people in Queensland know me. And Carl, you know me as well. Um, I am a woman of my word and I listen. And I, and I spend time with people and, you know, that's the way I operate. The, the problem was yesterday you called a meeting with Lee Lovell, uh, the husband of Brisbane mother uh, Emma Lovell, who, as you know, was killed in an alleged home invasion to get him away from the protest yesterday. He had no idea he was going to meet you. Why was it done under cloak and dagger secrecy? No, that's not correct. Um, that is a, correct. Was, that's what he says. Um, the, the, local, the local member... Um, brought Lee in to see me and unfortunately um, the local member has apologised that he should have said you're going to see the Premier. He thought he was going I to see a lawyer. I had a very good meeting with Lee. I'm not... Oh, OK. So the perception is here, Premier, that you are running scared and using your substantial media team to hide, avoid and distract. Is that what's happening? I'm here talking to you, Carl. Your police minister has now put forward a proposal to lock up youth offenders in police watch houses with adults. That's surely another band-aid. Um, how long before they're filled? Well, it's formalising a process that's been in operation in 30 years. Now, let's be very clear here. There's crime happening uh, right across the country. There's crime happening in Victoria. There's crime happening in Sydney. And there is crime happening in Queensland. We're giving the police the resources that they need to make sure that they can do their job. High visibility patrols, the police commissioner and the police minister just announced yesterday a flying squad that will be able to go to hot spots around the state. Um, I've personally uh, been up to Mount Isa where we now have a community champion up there who will be working with all of the service providers. I've been to Townsville, I've sat there, I've uh, met with all of the uh, stakeholders working there, targeting those uh, families, work, targeting those young offenders, those repeat offenders, and working with those families to ensure that other people in those families don't go down Premier, the same Premier, path. Premier, it's not there working. There is a lot of work that is happening it, it, across the state. It's not working. Well, Seven out of ten are reoffending. The bail laws aren't working. The punishment or lack thereof. It's just well, not are. working and you're charged. losing the people. 
No, your facts are incorrect. Uh, the courts have actually declared 28 serious repeat offenders. Uh, that means they are working. Now, Queensland is the only state that has serious repeat offenders, and, uh, and, and it's a declaration. It's a declaration which means that the courts can actually impose a longer sentence and that they must do rehabilitation. You have the power to fix it. When will you? Well, we're putting $1.4 billion into it. We've got the toughest laws in the country. And the opposition voted for these tough laws. So how long will it take? Well, we're rolling out programs. Uh, a lot of work has happened uh, right across Queensland. And as I said, um, we're putting in place a victims commissioner that will uh, start, um, hopefully, interim commissioner next week. You know these people. You met with them yesterday. You have husbands. You have literally husbands who have lost their wives to allegedly reoffending people. Yep. You must know the longer it takes, how many more people are we going to lose? Carl, we've put in place the laws, the police have been given the resources, and we are seeing more high visibility patrols of police out there on the streets, and the laws are working. We have declarations of serious repeat offenders. We now have a breach of bail as a criminal offence and we have a rollout of early intervention and prevention programs. Let's not forget too, parental responsibility also plays a role. That's a very clear message that the victims that I'm speaking to are saying to me, where are the parents? Now I acknowledge that there are some children out there that don't have parents looking after them. And that's why we are putting so much money into these early intervention and prevention programs. There's an awful lot at stake here. And Premier, honestly, I wish you all the best in there fixing is, it up and, and I quickly. agree with you. I agree with you. It is a tough issue and we are working around the clock to ensure that we have the programs and the laws to keep the community safe. The clock's ticking. Premier, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Well, for years now, Queenslanders have been living in fear, terrified of the teenagers living next door, angry at the laws that do little to protect them. Now they're saying enough is enough, descending on the streets of Brisbane to make their message heard. The youth crime scourge has been threatening our way of life, seemingly unchecked for years. Todd Ikefu is a family man, a gentle giant, brought to his knees inside his own Brisbane home, police say, by kids. It was 2021. Four teens aged 13 to 15 would later be charged with attempted murder as the former rugby star fought for his life in his own home. His neighbour Ben Kennan stepped in. Even the fact that you're standing here now and talking about it, how does it make you feel? Well, we're very grateful that uh, we're still here. Um, things like this shouldn't be happening. But they are. Brazen break-ins, lives lost. Innocent people paying the ultimate price. Why? A community left reeling after a senseless tragedy. Businesses buckling too. This one hit eight times. And I could only get one insurance company to insure me now. As people live in fear in their own homes, others are fearless. At last, the state government changed laws in March, but seemingly not enough to stop the lawbreakers. And if, if I saw it, and it happened to my kid, I'd want that, I'd want that whoever it was to be gone. locked up forever. At best, at best, I don't see these people being looked after at all by the law. I, I agree, and that's the number of the, the issues. Victims are almost completely ignored. Victims demanding to be heard. We've gone from being sad and upset to, to, as a community, overwhelmed with anger. And now it's all led to this. Queenslanders taking matters into their own hands. The people pounding the pavement to Parliament. Lee Lovell's wife, Emma, was killed in a violent home invasion on Boxing Day. And until it does affect you, then you don't always realise how much of an impact it is affecting everyday people nowadays. And it is certainly doing that, you know. But it's Are you not... and the girls OK? Um, I don't think we'll ever be OK, to be honest. You know, you just got to take each day as it comes. Everyone impacted in some way. People are locking themselves up in their houses at night time. We lock our doors to go downstairs and water our plants. We've got four kids and it's just very scary knowing the fact that there was thieves walking around our house in the middle of the night 
and they could have done anything. Aaron McLeod drove 21 hours from Cairns to be here. We had six young girls try and break into our house in the middle of the day. They were operating as a gang in our neighbourhood at the time. Did the police need more might or the courts need to keep them behind bars? I, um, I think I'll... I'll, I'll... A bit of everything. So police, uh, we've got a lot of police out there at the moment. What I have asked for, um, we are receiving. They've had enough. Premier, it's over to you. People Power and the Premier, Anastasia Palaszczuk, will be live after 8 o'clock this morning. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?